in the fast forecast it. So, you will get yourself a burette. They're in the drawers over underneath the big um, beakers. You're going to clean it. To clean your burette, you are going to rinse it three times with deionized water. To rinse it, you fill it some in, and then you let it drain out the bottom, close off the drain, lay it on its side, and roll. When you lay it on its side and roll as you empty, you are going to replace the contents of whatever was on the side with the water. Do that three times. You're going to do it three times, and then you're going to do the same thing with the permanganate, adding just a little bit to make sure that it's nice and clean. Don't put soap in. You'll never get it back out again. We good? Make certain that there's liquid coming out of the tip as you do this, and that this is not too tight. This is a stopcock. If it is too tight, get it to someone teaching your class and get it fixed. Are we cool? All right, so mine's working, and now I need to take and make sure that when I do my experiment, I'm not going to dilute my permanganate with the water that's in here. So I'm gonna get a burette clamp, please note, the burette clamps look like this. They've got the red ends, and you will clamp your burette like this. Make sure everything is clean. Dry is not going to be doable in the lab, so you're going to make sure just clean. So with this, I'm going to get a funnel, and I'm going to clean it with deionized water, and giving it a nice clean. I'm going to get myself a container of permanganate. Now, do not share your permanganate. At the end of the experiment, you're going to take whatever was in your burette and pour it back into the permanganate. I know we're not supposed to, but we don't want to pour it down the sink, which means that the concentrations may vary container to container. Don't share your permanganate container. So I'm going to take and I'm going to add just a little bit of my permanganate. I'm lifting up the funnel because if I don't, sometimes it can kind of seal, and if it seals, it can just bubble right over. So get yourself a waste container and let the permanganate drain out the bottom. It's diluting as it's doing this because there was water. I still have to take and replace the water that was on the sides with the permanganate that I'm putting in. So again, I'm gonna roll, laying on its side, and dump. And I need you to do that three times as well. When you've done that three times, you have replaced any water that was in your burette with the permanganate. Once you've got that done, you're going to fill. So, to fill, again, hold your funnel up here. Make certain, obviously, that this is shut. Fill carefully. If you're vertically challenged, get some help. Sorry about that. All right. When you fill, never put a lot in the funnel at once because otherwise, trust me, it will pour all over. I know this is a lovely shade of purple. It will turn everything you own brown. So if you get this on your clothes, you will get brown spots. Get it on your hands, you will get brown spots. We good? Powerful oxidizer. So I'm going to take and make sure that there's no air bubbles in the tip, and I want my burette to be starting at zero. Burettes do not, quote, contain, they deliver. Meaning when I start at zero and I end up at, say, 10 mils, I have added, delivered 10 milliliters. So we don't care that this could also say 50. Right now, this is sitting at zero. We have added none. At this point, we can do our experiment. To do your experiment, you're going to get yourself a nice, clean, but not dry Erlenmeyer flask. Get a large one. You're going to take and add your iron sample. I weighed out the 0.298 grams. I'm going to add it into my nice, clean Erlenmeyer flask. Because my volume is not relevant on this, the constant is the mass of the iron. I'm going to spritz a little water in my weighing boat and add it in. And then it says add about 75 mils of water. Yes, someone check it for me, please. About 75 mils of water. Yeah, wing it. Yeah, you can get a burette if you're not burette, a graduated cylinder if you need to, but honestly, add some water. It just needs to dissolve. We good? Then we need to add some sulfuric and some phosphoric acids. The amount are in here, and it says that we are going to add, actually it's about 50 mils of water, so I really winged it. We need three mils of the sulfuric. We're going to use the little pipette that's on the side. If we fill from the bottom of the pipette to the bottom of this bowl, right here where my fingers have stopped, that's one mil. So we're going to do that three times. And we're just going to take and go one, two, three on the sulfuric acid. This does not have to be exact. We simply need an acidified solution. And then I'm going to take here and I'm going to add phosphoric acid as well. 
and I'm going to add two mils of the concentrated phosphoric acid. This stuff is gloopy. <laughs> it is weirdly gloopy. It's also what makes your Coke sour, so it should bother you a little. Either way, add some phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is going to remove the manganese at the end from the solution so that it doesn't turn some weird shade. So, now what we have, I can do this, is my iron sample in water with my acids, and I'm going to titrate. What I'm going to do is add this solution, the permanganate, until all of the iron is gone. The, I will know when all the iron is gone because this is its own self-indicator. So what you're going to do is get yourself a nice white surface. With a nice white surface, you're going to titrate. If you are right-handed, you are going to swirl with your right hand and you're going to control the stopcock with your left. Our advice is to wrap your left hand around the burette to anchor it and hold on. And you're going to start adding some permanganate. Now, the end point is when the color goes from clear to pink and stays a very pale pink. You're going to know you're getting close to the end point when this pale pink on the top starts to linger. We good? Is it lingering yet? No? You're very quiet. This is boring. I know. No way. All right, and you need to do it over white because if you do it over black, it's really hard to see that pale pink. And you're just going to keep doing this. So my advice is whatever you do, don't do it drop-wise, otherwise you're going to be here for a century. Is the pink starting to stay? Um, no. No, starting, I mean, like on the top it's staying for longer? You need to get closer because, yes, it is. It's staying for longer. As soon as it starts to stay for longer, you're getting close. As when you start to get close, my advice, again, with your left hand wrapped around the burette, is to add it dropwise until the color stays. So you're going to take and add the permanganate. And this can be a little difficult to do, and you may actually have to pull out your other hand and try to do it like your IQ is normal. My, the moment mine's not, so. And then just add dropwise. And sooner or later, it's going to take and go from clear to pink in one drop. From clear to pink in one drop, is the end, and you have taken and finished your experiment. Unfortunately, this part's like watching grass grow. And if you're impatient, which never helps in lab, correct? Yeah, never ever helps in lab. If you're impatient, then this part goes, goes very badly, and if you hand up, hold up your Erlenmeyer flask with a hot pink solution, should it be hot pink? No. no. Pale pink. Pale pink. If you embrace your girl colors, it's going to turn out to be kind of rose. I know. Trust me. Be slower when you do it. And you'll get a pale pink endpoint. To verify that you're there, you're going to probably want to wash the sides down. But again, you're looking for pale pink. At this point, the permanganate is in excess. So I've got a little tiny bit extra, but not enough to mess my math up, and I could do my calculations. So let's do a calculation and make sure this makes sense. I have added 15.3 milliliters of my permanganate solution. So let's do the math. I want to find out what this concentration is, which is going to have the units of moles per liter. So I'm going to have to figure out moles. So step one. When I balance my reaction, step two, moles of what I have. So what do I have? I have 0.298 grams of the iron compound. The molar mass is on the package. I have one mole of my iron for every 392.14 grams of my iron. And that is going to give me the moles of the iron. But now I also have my balanced equation. And I know that there's one mole of permanganate for every five moles of iron, balanced equation? C. Thank you, five moles of iron. Once I've got that, I have the moles of permanganate. But I want the concentration. So take your moles of permanganate and divide it by the volume added in liters. Then you have the molarity. Do it twice, average your values. Are we cool? The only difference you're going to get in your calculations compared to mine is you will start out with a different value of iron. So this is going to be your value. 
and the amount of permanganate you added in liters or mils is going to be your value. We cool there? Mm -hmm. Take and get your molarity and average two. So do two runs and then average your results. Which still doesn't answer the question, which is how many milligrams of iron are in an iron tablet? That's part two. Part two is we know what the concentration of the permanganate is, and what we have unknown now is our iron. So we're going to figure out some iron. So you are going to take and get yourself an iron pill. The iron pills are in a container in the back. They are conveniently labeled with the amount, which in this case says 27 milligrams. Write it down. You're going to crush them. We do not care what the pills themselves weigh. All we care is that they have 27 milligrams. So you're going to grab yourself a mortar and pestle. Make sure it's dry. You won't get it clean, so don't bother trying. You may want to wash it. And give it a good crush. Once you've given it a good crush, you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with the original iron sample. You're going to take, put it in your solution. You're going to rinse this out with some deionized water. You're going to add some of each of the acids, and you're going to titrate. I will tell you that this is going to give you issues because this is red. This is purple. You're going to have a hard time finding the end point. The end point is when you're going to go from a sort of a weird reddish shade. They make it look like iron or like your blood, which is kind of weird. They could make it clear, but they don't. Anyways, you're going to go from this weird reddish shade into a pale purple. But it's going to have the white sort of powder in the bottom because most of your iron pill is, in fact, filler. And it's like a white solid. Are you good? At the end. Do your calculations, get your percent error. You, when you're through with your titration, take your permanganate and pour it back into the container. I know we're not supposed to do that in standard lab technique, but we really don't want the stuff down the sink, and we're cheap. We good? All right then, put your goggles on, have fun.